Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Indizor Education. Um, I would like to present a few standard uh, problems uh, related to function limits. Um, I call them standard because um, lots of problems which you will be dealing with during the course are combination of these. So, like basically, if you are talking about polynomial, it's basically a sum of uh, power functions with different powers, right? So, if you're talking about trigonometry, it's probably some combination of sine and cosine and tangent, etc. So, being in the standard, so to speak, allows to uh, to build some fundamental skills to to take um, certain limits to find out what exactly the function limit is. So that's number one. Another consideration for calling it standard is that I will primarily be dealing with limits of this type. If you have an argument x, I give an increment to this argument. So now I have basically an increment of the function between incremented value of the argument x plus delta and the old one. So this is an increment of the function and this is an increment of the argument, right? So mostly I will be dealing with these because these are fundamental um, approach to derivatives. So derivatives are all based on limits of this type. So let's not talk about derivatives, let's talk about limits, but you have to understand that these particular type of limits are the foundation for um, derivatives, which will be the next, next topic. Okay, so now this lecture, as many others, are part of the unizor.com um, course of advanced mathematics for teenagers and high school students. I recommend you to watch the lecture from this website because it has lots of detailed notes for each lecture. It's like a textbook. So basically the whole website is like a live textbook. You have the text and you have a lecturer uh, who is trying to explain this material in some other words, not exactly book kind of words. All right, so let's just go back to business. The function is x squared. Now, the limit which I'm interested in is let's fix some value of argument x. Let's give it some increment. So, the value of function will be this. Now, without this increment, this is my value of the function and I divide it by increment. Now, why this might present a problem? Well, for a very simple reason. Uh, as delta um, goes to zero, so delta is in the I infinitesimal, right? Now, but so is this difference between, you remember, the definition of um, function having a limit at certain point is that if my argument x goes to some value r, if x is sufficiently close to r, f at x would be sufficiently close to a. And for any degree of closeness between these two, I can always find the degree of closeness between these which assures me this particular closeness. Now, in this case, my variable which is changing is x. In this case, x is variable and changing is delta. So, for any x fixed x, I'm actually changing the value of delta. And I need to know what is the limit of this function as delta um, converges to zero. Now, obviously, this is infinitesimal and this is infinitesimal. So, it's some kind of an uh, indeterminate form of the limit, 
zero divided by zero, we have conditionally called it, because this is infinitesimal and this is as well. So it's not such an easy way to basically find out what exactly the limit is. It needs some transformation which allows us to basically do this particular calculations. And transformation in this particular case is very simple. You know the formula. If you don't know it by heart, you just multiply it and minus AB and plus AB will cancel each other, each other and I will have A square minus B square. Now, using this formula, I will represent the numerator as x plus delta minus x and x plus delta plus x divided by delta. Now, what do we have, what do we have now? x plus delta minus x is delta and delta is our variable which is converging to zero so it's not equal to zero so that's why I can cancel out these two things and the remaining is 2x plus delta now this as delta converges to zero obviously converging to 2x right because this is converging to zero and this is fixed basically so we have found that the limit of that thing is 2x all right so that's my first problem next problem is very similar just slightly more general so to speak here I was dealing with function x squared now I will deal with the function x to the power of n and any n let's assume that n is integer right now okay so the um, function is exactly the function which I'm going to find the limit is exactly similar which is x plus delta to the power of n minus x to the power of n divided by delta and again I should somehow convert this particular indeterminate limit because again this is as delta uh, converges to zero this converges to x to the power of n and this is x to the power of n so it's infinitesimal and this is infinitesimal and we have exactly the same indeterminate form of the limit zero over zero so somehow we have to manipulate with this now let me remind you again a uh, very well known and very simple formula which I'm going to use a to the power n minus 1 b to the power of 0 plus a to the power n minus 2 b to the power of 1 a to the power of 1 b to the power n minus 2 a to the power of 0 b to the power n minus 1 so again this is a very simple formula as you see the powers in sum are always n minus 1 n minus 2 plus 1 1 plus n minus 2 0 plus n minus 1 so this is sum of terms each one has a power sum, sum, sum of the power of n minus 1 so if you don't know again this formula by heart it's very easy to prove it by induction and I think I even have something like this proven in one of the induction, induction lectures in the very beginning of the course. So I can refer you to this formula. I'm not going to prove it right now. I'm just using it. Now, using this formula, what do I have? This minus this. So this is A and this is B, right? So the difference is x plus delta minus x as you see I already have delta by itself which will be cancelled with this one now multiplied by so in the at the bottom I have delta now this so a is this and b is this x so it's 
x plus delta to the power of n minus 1 and x to the power of 0, well, which is 1, plus x plus delta to the power of n minus 2 to the x plus etc plus um, x plus delta to the power of 1 x to the power n minus 1 plus x plus delta to the power of 0 x to the power n minus 1 all right so x minus x so we have only delta cancels with this delta and what remains is basically this sum now let's look at this sum first of all how many members are in this in this sum well n of them right because the power goes from n minus 1 to 0 so we have n members now each of them actually converges to the same thing consider just any particular member like x plus delta to the power of n minus i and x to the power of i minus 1 right so the sum is n minus 1 so what is the result of this uh, as delta converges to 0 well obviously it's x to the power of n minus i times x to the power of i minus 1 which is x to the power of n minus 1 and this is the same thing for every member because for every i it's still exactly the same thing x to the power of n minus 1 times x to the power of 0 would be x to the power of n minus 1, right? Because here we don't have any kind of indeterminateness. When delta goes to 0, we just basically cross it and that would be the limit. x is fixed. So, this is my result. So this thing converges to n x to the power of minus 1 as delta converges to zero. That's my second example. Next. So now, by the way, if you are looking for a similar limit, which means limit of the ratio between increment of the function divided by increment of the argument. If the function is polynomial, any polynomial, let's say x to the power of 3 minus 2x to the power of 2 plus x minus 15. Now, if this is my f at x, and I'm looking again f at x minus f at x divided by delta, increment of function divided by increment of the argument, what's the limit of this? Well, since the um, since this is a sum of uh, different power functions and limit of the sum is equal to sum of the limits I can always say that this thing goes to 3x squared this thing minus 2 times 2x so it's minus 4x this is um, x to the first uh, degree so it's plus 1 and what is the constant uh, if, a, if f at x is equal to constant well obviously these two are exactly the same right so if my f at x equals some kind of a constant I will have constant minus constant divided by delta and it's always zero because this is not an infinitesimal, in infinitesimal. This is real, real zero divided by non-equal to zero infinitesimal. So there is nothing there, and that would be the limit of this. So you see, knowing for uh, the power, you can just do anything for polynomial. Okay, so let's go on. Um, problem number three. Problem number three is f at x equals sine x so what kind of a limit I'm looking for again x is fixed and I'm looking for this well again we have indeterminate kind of a limit 
because if delta goes to zero and obviously these things are getting closer and closer so it's infinitesimal and this is infinitesimal so we have zero over zero we have to do something right okay let's do it let's recall what is a sign of sum equals so it's sine x cosine delta plus cosine x sine delta that's what it is minus sine x divided by delta equals now I would like to refer you to one of my previous lectures in trigonometry where I explained that if you have this type of uh, function as delta goes to zero it goes to one so I proved it uh, it's in trigonometry chapter of this course um, uh, I, I think it's geometry and trigonometry this type of thing it's one of the problems so you can go there and you can find out exactly how this thing is proven but this is a very interesting kind of a limit um, I think I've proved it using the geometric properties of the sign so it's quite quite an interesting thing and kind of unusual if you wish but anyway after you've learned that that's kind of a typical thing so I will use this and here is how it's helpful in this particular case uh, let me separate this particular member it's cosine x sine delta over delta and I obviously separate it because I know this now these two others would be minus sine x times uh, 1 minus cosine delta right minus sine x is this one minus and minus would be plus sine x and cosine delta okay now now let's separate let's consider this one separately from this one divided by delta sorry I forgot that all right now this one is some kind of a constant because X is fixed right only delta is changing this is a constant multiplied by something which is converging to 1 which means that this thing is converging to cosine X right now how about this one again it's a constant this is a constant and question is what is this well let's just recall another trigonometric formula that 1 minus cosine delta is equal to 2 sine square delta over 2 right am I right or wrong let me just briefly attempt to prove it so cosine delta is cosine delta over 2 plus delta over 2 right equals 2 cosine of sum is cosine square minus sine square and cosine is 1 minus sine square right so 1 minus 2 sine square delta over 2 which is correct okay so now what I'm going to do is I will just replace this thing with this 2 sine square delta over 2 and what's even more interesting I take 2 from there I put it here okay now what is, what is this well this is sine of 
infinitesimal, infinitesimal divided by this infinitesimal times another sign. But another sign is infinitesimal, right? So I can put it sine times sine of delta over 2. Now this is converging to 1. This is the constant. And this, as delta converges to 0, goes to 0. So we have constant converging to 1 and converging to 0. What's their product? It's converging to 0, right? So this thing goes out, and the only thing we should have is cosine x. So the limit of this is cosine x. Again, kind of unusual. From sine, we have to switch to cosine, right? OK, next problem. Next problem, well, logically speaking, should be cosine. So we are looking for cosine of x plus del delta minus cosine uh, of x divided by delta. That's the limit which you are looking for. So again, cosine of sum would be cosine x cosine delta minus sine x sine delta minus cosine x divided by delta equals again I will separate this member you see sine x so it's minus sine x times sine delta over delta why I have se separated because this thing converges to 1 as we know now what's left is um, minus cosine x 1 minus cosine delta divided by delta right now this is a constant and this is exactly the same thing as we had for sine and we know that this is converging to zero because I'm changing this to 2 sine square and uh, since it's square divided by delta in the first degree one of the sine divided by delta would be a constant 1 and another would be constant 0 I mean limit, limit 1 and limit 0 so the total limit would be constant times 1 times 0 which is 0 so my result is minus sine of x so from sine we go to cosine and from cosine we go to minus sine well I think it's very interesting with trigonometry all right and the last problem which I have I have covered certain functions certain basic functions there is one basic function which probably is kind of a typical so we have to separate separately consider it square root of x so I'm looking for square root of x plus delta minus square root of x divided by delta so what is this limit a and again obviously it's uh, as it is right now it's indeterminate it's uh, infinitesimal divided by infinitesimal well in this case uh, I'm going back to this formula But in this case, I'm going not from here to there, but from there to here. So I consider A and B being these ones. So I will multiply it by their sum. And divide by the same thing. So we don't change. Now, why did I do it? Because now, it's a minus b a plus b so the result would be a square minus b square which is x plus delta 
that's square of this minus square of this divided by delta uh, I'm sorry there is no square here square root of x square is x which is delta times square root of this and why did they did it well obviously because x and x canceling and now delta and delta is canceling and that's what I have I have 1 over square root of x plus delta plus square root of x and obviously when delta converges to 0 this is converging to 1 over 2 square root of x and that is my limit there is one other fundamental function the exponential function which I did not really touch here um, I will do it separately because there are some interesting aspects um, like uh, the very interesting number e which I will introduce I think I was talking about this before very briefly but I will touch it a little bit in more details in one of the lectures alright so basically these are um, fundamental or standard if you wish problems related to taking the limits for functions and all the limits which I have right now used were of this type as delta converges to zero and again uh, this is specifically preparation for derivatives because this would be the fundamental limit um, when we will talk about uh, derivatives um, I'm not saying that any other limits are useless no not at all I mean obviously there are many other kinds of limits um, but in, in any case these are very important for my future lectures and that's why I dedicated special lecture for this we might consider some other limits as well um, however uh, in most of the cases to take the limit of one of these typical problems with limits would be sufficient if you knowing whatever I presented today in this lecture would be sufficient to just separate your problem whatever it is into smaller problem each one one of these standard or fundamental problems um, I do suggest you to go to unizor.com and read the notes for this lecture. I think it's very educational. Um, it's basically the proofs of uh, whatever I was just discussing here. Well, that's it. Thank you very much and good luck.